Hi everyone, I'm Dave, I'm the Album Review Guy. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at a young man that's got quite a obsession with a prostitute. The track we're looking at is from the self-titled 1983 album, and it's the only track, Mamma. Are those drums? This drum rhythm was just so instantly recognisable.
Well then, that's the definition of a classic track. Genesis, Mame, from the 1983 self-titled album, the only track there. So much to talk about. So, the song is based on the David Niven book, The Moon's a Balloon. This tells the story of his fixation with this prostitute. It's quite a strange relationship, son with mother. That positions the basics of the storyline. But what have we got in here? Well, this particular song represented this new way that Genesis decided it were going to be writing songs where you just arrived at the studio with absolutely nothing. You start to jam, you start to improvise, and hopefully something from it comes comes to fruition. And Mama was a good example of this. Strangely enough, the drum pattern was actually written by Mike Rutherford. Yes, the bass guitarist. Yes, the lead guitarist after Hackett left. He produced this after experimenting with the Lynn drum machine. So that's the first thing. Tony Banks came up with some additional chords to help pub this out after Phil Collins had been going around the studio mumbling and singing and humming away with this mammoth idea going around in his head. On the subject of the drums, this particular style had been used previously on one of Peter Gabriel's albums. Collins had used a similar sort of drum pattern uh, to great effect on the track Intruder. So it wasn't an entirely new idea. The faces that were pulled were designed to add to the illusion of this unspoken of relationship that was that was going on, this asphyxiation that was going on. The crazy laugh that was used was essentially ripped off from the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five song, The Message, where Melly Mel does a, a very similar sounding laugh to the one that Collins uses on this track. It's the biggest single of the band's career in the UK. That was quite extraordinary, really. In America, it didn't even chart at all. The record company decided to go with That's All rather than Mama, and that became a massive track over there. So here in the UK, it was Mama. In America, it was That's All. I like That's All. I'll come back to that one as well at some point. The video that was released was frequently rotated on MTV, and that picture of the demonic Phil Collins really helped to boost the band's notoriety and also Phil Collins's over the years and it's something that he's always been associated with from that day. It's not my most favourite Genesis track of all times. My scoring system's quite simple. I rate anything 7 out of 10 that's perfectly respectable and listenable to Lower score, not so good. Higher score, much better. This falls smack bang on the cusp. It's a 7 out of 10 for me. As I say, it's not the most favourite. There are better Genesis songs out there, really in this uh, pop age of the band as well. But there's a good storyline to it. It's kept its interest over the years, which is great. I like it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this track. If you've liked the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up to like, and to subscribe to the channel, if you will. I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.